Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the top 10 essential hobo tools every traveler needs. Stay tuned. I was asked a question by Lauren Fleming, one of my YouTube viewers, about what would be the top 10 essential items that I would pack on the road if I were gonna be a hobo or if I were traveling on the road. And so I'm gonna to try to show you some classic tools and then talk about some modern equivalents. Also, in case you've noticed, some of the videos have a red stripe along the side on the thumbnail that says Waypoint Survival. And those videos are preparedness videos. I just wanted to give you a heads up on that and we'll be adding some other colors in the days to come. Now, I have my stuff in a classic hobo bindle. And it was typically a handkerchief or a pillowcase or a blanket. There was all kinds of ways they carried these. They didn't all carry these. Many hobos, of course, carried knapsacks. Modern hobos carry backpacks and pretty well modern camping gear. But I like to go with the kind of early 1920s, 1930s, 1940s type hobo. And it's a bit of a caricature, but people did carry these. And so I'm gonna show you what I have in here. I've already showed most of this, but the tool list is kind of different from uh, the other. And again, uh, thank you, Lauren, for that question. The bulk of the tools are easily carried along with everything else that you might need for an overnighter. Of course, you'll be spending the night under overpasses or uh, in abandoned train cars or open box cars, whatever it might be. So a hobo didn't really carry a whole lot of shelter items, especially when uh, he was in warmer weather. So again, we're not going to worry too much about that. One of the first and most important items, of course, was some sort of a sturdy fixed blade. And this is just an old Camelus. But this was very useful and of course still is today in modern times as they would use this for processing game. You could use it for self-defense if you need to. Uh, you would also uh, be able to process firewood and you would be able to uh, do any of your camp chores pretty well that would be required with something like this. Uh, some of them did have a heavy pommel and you could even use that for a bit of a hammer if you needed to put together a, a, a nail into a shelter or something like that. Uh, different types of uses, of course, depending on what type of blade you had, what was available. They typically weren't wealthy people, so the things they used were pretty well worn. The next item we're going to pull out is a pair of metal snips. And of course, these can be found from late 1800s all the way up to modern times. I generally prefer to use a pair of Fiskars, uh, but these are kind of needle nose and these are for making cuts in metal. You can use them for uh, working on a, a tin roof, for instance, if you're putting together a pallet structure. Uh, this is also very useful for making tin cans into useful items, things that you can trade to other hobos or that you could use yourself or even sell alongside the road to perhaps uh, passerbys who would want to buy some of your wares. And people did make a living using these things. The next item is simply a flathead screwdriver. And remember that in the area that I'm talking about, they didn't have Phillips head screws. That wasn't until the 1950s. So flathead screws have been around for hundreds of years. And of course, this can be used for a prying tool and to get into things and to wedge doors open. There's a lot of things you can use a flathead screwdriver for. Of course, today, modern equivalent, you would want to have a Phillips screwdriver because not too many things come with a flathead anymore. But this can also double if you sharpen this. You actually make a pretty good chisel out of it if you're trying to make something out of wood. The next item that you would carry would be some sort of a can opener. Of course, this is very useful for opening cans along the road. People would often give you canned food or you could work for it. It was something you could carry with you. And back in the day, they often cooked in their tin cans. Uh, didn't burn them out or anything, even though they were put together with lead solder. And I'm sure that led to some health issues down the road. But you needed a can opener. Of course, a modern equivalent. I like to use a safety can opener, which doesn't leave any sharp edges. This one, of course, the way it's made, uh, it leaves a lot of jagged edges around the can when you're opening it up. But it's just a really neat classic old can opener. One of the next most important things that a hobo would carry would be some sort of a sharpening stone. Carborundum stone wrapped up in something to keep it from scratching other items. Of course, you would use this for sharpening your tools along the road, and this could be very, very useful. And it could also be something you could trade as a skill to sharpen other people's tools and scissors and things if you were good enough at it. The next item that we have in our 10 essential tools is a small file. This is a metal file, and it has two sides and including a nice edge here that is also useful. And of course, this is useful for 
uh, filing items like your knife if you get a real bad burr on it or if you need to sharpen the screwdriver into a chisel or even sharpen a nail which they often did but this would be very useful along the road and you can use it for any number of items the next item that you would have would be a pair of pliers of course these are useful for many things such as reaching in to grab a pot out of a fire if you're using a pot that doesn't have a handle or if you have a stove that's made out of a tin can and you're trying to shift it around or you want to grab a, a hot stick and move it around these are very very useful you could also use this of course along with your snips if you're making tin projects uh, making lanterns and things like that that you could sell again alongside of the road or trade to other hobos and many working men traveling hobos along the road they did make projects while they were sitting under overpasses and waiting on a train they would busy themselves and so a pair of pliers very very important of course a modern equivalent would be to bring a multi-tool and that'll work really good and of course with multi-tool you have a lot of other items but back in the day a pair of pliers would do the next item that we must have is a bottle opener church key the church key of course is this triangular side and this was used back in the day most of your bottles of course uh, you could open them by hand you had to have a bottle opener and then a lot of oil cans and things you would use this on on the edge to open it up to form a triangular hole some of you old enough to remember when you had to pour the oil out of cans and you would use that side but this is also really good for making holes in tin cans for making a stove a twig stove and of course buy a good one this is an old echo made in the USA and there's a lot of modern equivalents but I think when it comes to this you need to buy an older brand they're a lot better steel the new ones bend easy I found next you'd want a couple of 16 penny nails and this of course useful for frog gigging and any kind of projects you can tap this into a tree hang your gear up on it you can dry things out two of them are very useful this one as you see has been hammered into a flat chisel shape and the hobos would often take a nickel and they would very carefully scratch and carve the surface because it was fairly soft it's 75% uh, nickel 25% copper and they would carve that into all kinds of amazing designs and they would then take that and trade it to a local restaurant owner sometimes they could turn a nickel into a quarter and they would be able to get a good meal that way that's about what a meal cost during the depression about 25 cents so they could if they had good eyesight and they were artistic they could use a nail and they would sharpen that and just very slowly carve into those hobo nickels and you can find those on eBay they're really neat it's a wonderful study some people are still doing it uh, some of them are are very very good indeed number 10 is a ball of string with a ball of string you can tie up projects you can put handles on things uh, you can lash things together for uh, holding any kind of item together that you wish and so some cord or string would be a very important item that a hobo would carry and again not a lot maybe 20 feet so that was our 10 essential tools but there's one more I want to show you and that's simply this this is a used 12 gauge hull and cork and top and it simply has matches inside and a striker and this is a fairly waterproof and lightweight as well as cheap way to carry your matches and this was something very common back in the day as a matter of fact uh, there have been copies of made of this for waterproof match safes and they were based on this design marbles as a matter of fact uh, copied this idea when he made his marbles match safe and here they are all laid out together and these are what I would consider to be the top 10 essential hobo tools that every traveler needs and many of them would use along the road to make things. Now do remember that many of them were traveling working men, some of them were machinists. Uh, often they had access to entire tool rooms and machine shops before they hit the road. So a lot of their items would be very well fabricated and they weren't just, they weren't bums and they weren't necessarily a tramp. A tramp is someone who goes from place to place riding the rails but he won't work unless he's made to and a bum of course is someone who's generally an alcoholic and they don't really travel or go anywhere they just look to try to get more alcohol so hobos were people with a very specific code I would encourage you to look up the hobo code of ethics uh, they were very respectable and honorable men and they were very specific about how they treated people because they depended on the goodwill of folks as they traveled from town to town to help them get work and find jobs and if they made a bad name or a bad reputation for themselves then they wouldn't be hired the next place they went so hobos were very interesting a lot of people and uh, many of them still are today 
So thank you so much for watching the video. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the More button. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes here at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press the bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.